welcome to another episode of Access to Perspectives Conversations. Today we have Gabriele Marinello in the room, who's the founder and CEO at Chaos. And Chaos is a company run out, well, being, as much as you're Italian, you're the company's registered in Ireland, right? Um, because you that's where you did your study. And maybe this is also the good a good opportunity for me to hand over to you. Welcome you again. Like welcome, warm welcome, Gabriele. Um uh I was gonna say that in Italian. All I can remember now is ciao. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. My Italian is gone. It's I have more on, on my repertoire. It's just um uh recording anxiety it's hiding it um but yeah it's, it's great to have you on the show and yeah let's get started so starting with maybe how we met i remember you telling me that story you're about to share again when we met at the open science conference in berlin and was it in 2018 certainly before the pandemic and then exactly 2018 or 19 i cannot remember but one of those um of those dates yeah definitely so and then um we luckily sat next to each other in the in a in a session and that's when we started talking and um and that led to a collaboration between Africa Archive and Chaos, where Chaos is one of the venues and um recommended and appreciated mm -hmm. um repositories for preprints for peer reviews, peer review review reports that can be openly um but they can then be published as such and mm -hmm. um attributed to the reviewers and um cited made citable mm -hmm. but you started with chaos as a database for definitions so how did this come about and not over to you yeah of course thank you so much for the intro so so as you said um the, the platform uh, as it is right now is quite flexible. It, it, it is a venue for, for many, many different scholarly objects uh, uh, from uh, definitions uh, to preprints, uh, final articles, uh, peer reviews. But but uh, in the very early days, uh, we started, uh, the platform was uh, was uh, um, kind of different and, and the approach was different. We wanted to start by solving uh, a problem in science, which is this, uh, the fact that there are so many different definitions um, currently used in, in science. I mean, definitions of the same entities that researchers need to, to define and, and to use for the research, to compose the research, that, that are many, that have, sorry, many, many different meanings um, according to how they are defined around the world. Like one example for all, the definition of quality of life, for example. There are currently in use more than 1,500 different definitions of quality of life, and uh, research teams around the globe are using, uh, using I mean, the one that was defined for that specific paper, or the one that uh, maybe is in use uh, in use um, uh, in the region, and so on. But the problem is this: once you have to compare different uh, studies, I mean, that are trying to answer. Um, some related questions. So, for example, uh, what what is the best treatment of uh, for breast cancer, for example, right? Uh, you need to compare different studies, and if you have different definitions, you cannot compare the studies. So you cannot come up with uh, with one univocal answers uh, answer like okay, the treatment provided by the Chinese uh, um, uh, scientist is the best one. You cannot say that because. Uh, you cannot compare the, uh, the definitions that have been used uh, um, uh, uh, to compose the study, right? Mm -hmm. So, so we wanted we wanted to solve this initial problem, and uh, we started envisioning a platform for researchers to um, to compose and provide the scientific community with all these different definitions, well clustered for the first time under the same caps. So imagine for the first time. Uh, in history, all the definitions of quality of life uh, well clustered together under the cap quality of life, so that researchers could peer review these definitions and rate these definitions and come up with uh, with a podium of the top definitions. So, so the top ingredients that they um, they should use in science that it's better for them to use in science in science, so that 
not only they could use uh, uh, better ingredients, uh, ingredients, but also in um, uh, much, much more comparable ingredients, so that uh, research around the globe can be compared, and and maybe we can find more univocal answers. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to um, to solve that problem, but in solving the problem, we immediately realized that it was kind of uh, you know. Um, uh, it wasn't it wasn't that easy to divide that problem from the publication um the publication and and the composition of research uh, problems so we envisioned a platform where uh, researchers again could uh, immediately afterwards um, uh, we envisioned uh, an evolution of of the initial platform where researchers could use these definitions in uh, immediately in their research to compose the research directly on our platform. Okay, uh, we provided them with an editor where they could use uh, all these different building blocks uh, to create their uh, their articles. And at that at that time, we thought, why not also letting researchers publish the output? I mean, the, the output is there, is mm -hmm. ready. Why don't let researchers publish on the platform directly the output? Well, this is the and, same infrastructure you're using, right? It's not a big extra effort for you as the provider. Exactly, definitely. And and uh, and we thought, why don't apply the same peer review process that we have um, designed for the definitions also to articles as well mm. at, the very end of the process, at the very end of the process, which is a post-publication peer review process that we initially envisioned for the definitions. We decided to, you know, translate these also uh, to um, uh, to the article space. So uh, researchers uh, um, now what they can do is to uh, create an article um, on the platform, to um, publish uh, the article straight away on the platform, um, and uh, and uh, to immediately uh, post the article online. Uh, to uh, to get reviews from invited peers that we invite, we have an AI which is able to locate the most suitable peers for a specific paper. So to have peers to um, to uh, review these these papers, and and you have a final product which is a, a scientific paper which has been built with. Uh, uh, possibly the best definitions around and uh, uh, which has been peer reviewed in the open, not like in the traditional system, in the, uh, I mean, uh, traditional journals uh, where the peer reviews goes by inviting uh, uh, at maximum three peers, uh, uh, it's blind, it is blind. Uh, so it's very, very different. Here you have these uh, peer review process, which is again out there in the open. Um, uh, where researchers, uh, not just invited researchers from us, but also other researchers that are knowledgeable about the topic can definitely join the process and provide uh, their feedback. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that um, it works like uh, um, more like, uh, you know, uh, you team up with your peers rather than uh, in the traditional system, you have, you know, these uh, these peer reviews that, that um, are there to provide an editorial decisions uh, decision uh, to some editors right instead here you team up with with peers uh, peers um, help you amend your paper and you can even version your article your paper uh, with the uh, insights with the suggestions from peers mm. this is why you're not in competition with your peers but you team up with them they are there to uh, suggest you with um, uh, with all the amendments that that maybe you uh, you will need to consider to make a better paper, so you create a vision two, vision three, vision whatever of your paper, and uh, all the the entire process is out there available for anyone to read, mm -hmm. for anyone to see. So um, so yes, um, we have created an entire environment, a research environment from from research composition to research publication, which is which is uh, um, quite. Uh, I would say open and uh, and uh, you know um, it's it's it has been designed to um, to help researchers create a better research, not just uh, uh, you know uh, uh, I would say show off the research, you see to create be better research. 
So, so yes, from the very beginning, again, to, to, uh, to what we are right now, it has been quite a long, a long journey. We have added all these little pieces, but the final product again, um, is, is something that, that is very, very, um, enjoyable on the part of the researchers and very useful for, for research in general, I would say. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I like what I hear and it's, I think it's, it's, it feels like, and it sounds like it's best explicitly how publishing should be practiced in a digital era, meaning that the researcher knows what they found as a research outcome and results. They share it with the peers and also the um, non-academic stakeholders um, who are either well contributors as well as recipients of the of the results. I mean, contributors to the research. Um, sub, some agricultural research obviously has farmers and an agricultural um, like workforce um, as stakeholders, policy makers. So each of them. Are now capable and e like I think it's is it mostly for the scholars or the scholars are mostly prone to to actually engage with chaos and in the peer review and the publishing, but anybody else because it's open in the public, the other stakeholders can witness what's happening, can also add their comments if they so wish, and that is highly informative to the actual research again to. To either revise their manuscripts, as you said, into another version to continue the research into new directions they might have not come up with on their own, unless it's in the in the open. And also compared to other established or emerging open or semi-open um, publishing processes that are, and I think it's good for various stakeholders to to test. Um, whichever workflow works for, seem, you know, seems feasible. But I feel like what you're just describing now, what you've built with Chaos and your team, is, as you said, it's like built for the community and the community has ownership as much as also accountability. And, and there's no time lost because the process is happening in the open and is owned and coordinated by the actual researchers who've done the work and who are keep being in charge of their own outcomes and not have to wait on editor team, editorial teams who are easily overworked with the task of finding reviewers um, for the work they want to consider for publishing in the journals. Um, and that just builds a whole cascade of delaying processes where- Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, okay. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, huh. well, that's good. Um, okay, so how, how do, do you see that the community that's now engaging with chaos, do they, is it easy for them to make best possible use of the products you've designed, like incorporating the definitions, uh, researchers, sorry, citing their own definitions um, that they've published and made citable also in or other or other people's definitions, scientific terms. Um, so are all the components being made used of use of complementarily so? Or what is because I assume yeah. that it's also easy to be overwhelmed by the possibilities of a new product or of a new survey right. contains yeah, several products. Exactly, you're totally right. Um, and in this sense, in this sense, we can say that um, precisely uh, because because the definitions are, are a, a relatively uh, new object uh, uh, in the scholarly world, um, we can say that it is uh, also the most difficult to um, uh, you know to uh, to let researchers use uh, just because it's new. You have to uh, to kind of uh, uh, instruct them on what it is. Uh, I will. I will um, they should use it and so on. So we can say that that is the part that that is the least used in the platform uh, on the platform. The the definitions the definitions part. Instead, what what they are using the uh, what they are using the the platform uh, mostly for is uh, is uh, for for their papers because they know what a paper is. 
um, uh, what they can uh, they can get out of it if uh, if they can envision what they can get out of it if the, uh, they use this platform where there is no editorial process uh, where there is uh, immediate pu uh, publication and uh, and so on. so so it's it's much much easier for them to start with the paper and then learn by using the platform what what the a definition is and so on so mm -hmm. we can say that for the most part, uh, um, um, and mostly when we engage with new scientists, the platform is being used for papers, for, for the papers. And of course, for the peer reviews of these papers, because again, we have um, we have an invitation process in place, uh, AI assisted, uh, where where we invite the peer reviewers. So so uh, we have the peer reviewers on one side and the papers on the other side, and these two objects are the most uh, the most represented on the platform. And then once they they kind of understand um, how. Uh, how are the other possibilities uh, on the platform, uh, namely the, the definitions? Uh, they start using that that one uh, as well. But mm -hmm. but to answer briefly to your question, yes, definitely there is a, a different representation of uh, usage of the different object. I would say definitely that the paper is the, is the one that and it specifically right now right now the preprint is the one that is most represented. But there is an escalation uh, also. Of usage uh, for for um, uh, for um, uh, final papers so final publications so uh, uh, researchers that maybe they have started using the platform for their preprints okay they have uh, they have seen peer reviews coming to their preprints and at uh, at that point uh, uh, with a peer review the preprint they have just decided to remove the preprint label which is an option that we have in the plat on the platform and make their and a publication, a final publication. Okay, so so um, uh, I will say that again, the major usage is for preprints, and then once the peer reviews come uh, comes, uh, sorry, come in, um, they they uh, some of them decide to remove the preprint label and use the platform as a final destination for their works. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So uh, just briefly on the definitions, I love that feature and I think it's highly valuable not only to come to terms or as a scientific community to use one definition over the other and be clear of what the definition then entails. But I think as you also told me, as it's often the case in medicine, that you have one term meaning different things in different communities and for very good reasons because the evolution of the and the understanding of a certain topic or yeah which then has a term um is is often so different and so highly specific to a particular research approach that you end up using the same term but but in a different context and that needs a separate definition and both definitions even though they use the same term have equal standing and then the way how you came up with a way to assign also a DOI and make the definitions with their descriptions um, citable now is makes it for the first time ever possible to be clear in your research articles, descriptions, methods, whatnot, which climate change definition you're referring to as you talk about climate change. Or in my case, I think I postulated one. Well, I know I postulated a definition that makes sense to me as a trainer and consultant for open science practices. I defined open science how I think it makes sense to be defined. And there is, I think, 10 or so other definitions about open science, and all of them are true in nature. And I can also subscribe to it's just that I think open science to me is also something else on top. And maybe less of something else somebody else was defining it as. So, but that's okay. And I think also to have a scientific discourse, it's essential that we understand what we're actually talking about when we use certain terminologies. Exactly. Yeah. And, yeah, and also that's revising okay. some definitions because they're outdated and they're only contextualized to a certain era. Um and then they should only be contextualized to that time of age. 
Definitely, definitely, definitely. Yeah, exactly. I mean, um, even if I said uh, at the very beginning that, uh, I mean, uh, the the aim would be to uh, to find you know the top definitions and so on. As you said, uh, in some definitely in some cases, it's not even uh, that easy, or it's not even. Uh, um what is what is uh, uh, i mean the main the main object there is um is maybe instead just to have a place where you can discuss about these objects and maybe and maybe uh, you know provide the reasons why uh, some definitions can be can be different and must be different in different locations uh, in different uh, time periods and so on right mm -hmm. so so uh, at least you have a place at least you have a place with all these definitions gathered together with the possibility for scientists to peer review these definitions, for engaging in a discussion with the authors of the definitions, with other peers and so on, and, uh, uh, to, you know, to discuss and, and come up with, uh, with uh, you know, uh, some conclusions about, about, about these objects. So, so yes, it, it is something, something interesting, definitely. And the other thing, like also as I'm coordinating and working with a team to run a preprint repository or start it as, I've grown to and learned to not appreciate the term preprint any longer because there's nothing pre, it's a manuscript. It's the outcome of a research study, full stop. Right. And there's right. nothing pre about it because we're not printing stuff anymore unless you're using your home printer. Like, I mean, yes, we're printing books still, thankfully. I like to have an actual book in my hands, but and when we refer to research articles, most information is being consumed online and also most information I assume is being consumed by algorithms and bots, not anymore as much by humans. Because I, I also give a scientific writing course and I often start that course with or also uh, um, strategic reading course and when we talk with the PhD students about how many papers have you read this week and then people start like oh my god I should have like the thought process goes like oh my god I should have read like 10 20 papers and I just didn't get to it and I know that feeling from already 10 a decade ago was already overwhelming then and imagine nowadays <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay because hardly anyone has the capacity to read like to fully read and consume um, a research article we just don't have the time and the headspace anymore um, and that's sad because research articles are structured in a way that they're a full story they tell a story with the beginning context description methodology so they make sense as a whole but we can only cherry pick and strategically approach it for information that we're looking for to then move on to the next one. And that's just sad, but yeah. I had another conversation earlier today about ChatGPT. That's a whole other story. So it's going to be interesting where we headed again uh, towards. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> time, I think the, the approach with seeing preprints as what they are, as a research manuscript, and now having the technology um, amongst others also provided by chaos with the possibility to version manuscripts and research output also data sets to open them up to feedback um, by peers um, for discussion and then for them to evolve further as long as you have budget to continue the research on a particular topic and somebody else might pick up on it or a previous or a later version of the manuscript that's just another level of accessibility to the research and the research output, and also making each step in that versioning process citable with a specific DOI or a versioning DOI, which still refers to original submission. It just makes so much sense. So I tend to walk away from the term preprint and also with Africa Archive or in my own courses, with access to perspective, I tend to talk about manuscripts or research articles, and they are published when they're in a repository. It's also a way to publish. So the corporate publishers do not own the term publish. I mean, you're also corporate publisher, sorry. So <laughs> the other, <laughs> the, the big five don't own the term publishing. But 
anything accessible and made open to the public is published public is, is a publication list. It's just a question if if it's really accessible, meaning is there a paywall or not, and that can still be a publication, you pay for it, and that's a revenue stream. And and that's also not bad per se. But um but yeah, as long as you open up your products or the products of your work to the public, it's a publication. So it's yeah, and then to have living documents of data sets and manuscripts is responding to the nature of science and science communication. So now it feels like we're making technology work for research as a community. Huh. Exactly. exactly. Exactly, and not just that. Uh, I mean, also the fact that we can define define it even more. You know, um, the, the the fact that a preprint can get peer reviews right now make it not just a publication rather than a, a preprint, as you just said, but also a peer reviewed publication. You see, mm -hmm. uh, so 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 yes, uh, we are adding layers uh, uh, recently, layers on layers, so that. Um, so that we we can maybe you know uh, provide some more dignity to to uh, to products that have the same level of dignity of others, uh, just they don't have the same branding around. So 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 yes, uh, we 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 definitely hope that we can get there as soon as possible. Mm. Ah, okay. So what's on stock? What's on the roadmap for chaos? this year and moving forward what are the next yeah. steps so uh yeah great question um we we definitely want to want to be able to play um in the in the you know in the big ocean as much as possible um so uh so to be able to do that we need to um to get Index it in in some major databases such as PubMed and so on. So we have started our our indexing, uh, you know, uh, escalation. I would think uh, I I would say sorry. Um, uh, so we have started uh, applying for, uh, for example, again PubMed indexing and uh, and uh, other. Other databases that will come soon, so that uh, at that point, uh, that at that point, we are providing one more reason for researchers to use the the platform not just as a first stop for their research, namely as a, as a preprint venue right now, but as a final destination for their research works. Mm -hmm. um, because because uh, again, we are playing with the same with the same uh, you know. Uh, uh, with the same right. set of tools, yeah, and and a set of capabilities in terms of we are providing the same level of of discoverability and so on. So so yes, uh, in terms of uh, what come what comes uh, next next for chaos, I would say that that um, we this year we're going to do everything that is in our possibilities to expand the discoverability capabilities of, of the platform uh, in terms of indexing. So this is this is our big goal for for the near future. Mm -hmm. And uh, and along with that, of course, we are keeping refining our our um, re reviewer invitation tools. Uh, we keep we're keeping refining the platform, all the features um, that we have on the platform. But but yes, if I have to sum up to to one or two things, uh, I would say that the indexing is the is the is the biggest one, and uh, and uh, immediately afterwards uh, is uh, um, you know keeping improving our peer reviewing capabilities. Brilliant sounds sounds terrific, and I think well. We know indexing is key. Um, like Google Scholar is also mostly used across Africa as a reference point because it just works. It's not perfect for making sense of what research, if you search for particular research, but it's the indexing system that I think most people use, at least from what I know for Africa and Latin America and Southeast Asia. Because just because of the paywall of Web of Science and Scopus, um, but PubMed I think is is it open access? I'm not sure. 
Parmesan, is it, it, it is, it is. I mean, uh, the in terms of of uh, full tax, mm -hmm. uh, the PMC they have two databases, the PMC and Medline. The PMC database is is more devoted devoted to open science and so on. So they try to have uh, uh, the full the full tax uh, of all the papers that they index in in that in that uh, in that specific uh, database. So so yes, they do they do they are doing definitely a lot for for open science as well. Um, so so yes. Uh, there is a lot of literature right now that you can find open access uh, the full tax uh, on 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 uh, PubMed. Yeah. Yeah, and the director of open access journals is also a, a good resource for, for well exactly. journals. I think they're also now embracing preprint repositories, which is basically a gateway for chaos to be indexed in. Um, it's just like I. It's just like say well the. It just has a little bit of a bittersweet connotation because, of course, Dutch has quality standards for who and how the index. But and that's um, I'm not, I'm not saying this should this will be a barrier for chaos necessarily, but it's been a repetitive barrier for publishers from Africa, um, where they're being de discouraged to resubmit, or it's just not possible for them to comply with the standards because of the lack of capacity to some degrees. Um, so it's yeah, in that sense, in terms of global inclusiveness. I think there's still quite a bit to learn to make indexing services and databases fully functional to reflect the publishing for force from around the world while still complying with quality standards. So that's just, I, I admire the work that the team at Deutsch is doing, while I also see how it's well, there uh, we're all working on on getting on, on improving this. Um but I think also Crossref is Crossref and data sites are the two key DOI assigning organizations and and scholarship. Not the only ones though, but the ones that work most towards open science practices and discoverability um, for the community. Let's put it that way, or primarily having the community's interests in mind first. Um, and um. It's just that I've seen organizations like the Lens indexing anything that's going through Crossref DOI assignment, and also from other databases. So, for for discoverability of also chaos's um, contents, for some uh, discoverability services, you don't need to bother about indexing in the first place because it's already happening. Yep. Exactly, exactly. It's just a matter of being aware and where to look. And that's again important for the researchers to also know where they should what they should look out for, as in features that a service like Harris provides, how the DOIs are being assigned through which service, and then knowing, okay, if I use this service, the like chaos, I know that my work will be discoverable in these and these places. Yep. And that's I think that's what we want to achieve, to empower exactly. researchers and to make the research output discoverable. Exactly, exactly. I think, uh, yeah, uh, there is there is a concentrated uh, effort right now around the globe that uh, that is uh, unprecedented. I, I I would say in that direction, and I think that that we are more closer, more closer, like cl sorry, closer than ever uh, to. To get in there, so mm -hmm. so fingers crossed that we 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 will we will see good things in the in the coming years. I I I, will, I, I think yeah. I think so too. And a perfect final statement. Unless you want to add something else, <laughs> but I think um yeah, it sounds great. The uh, services that Chaos is already providing, um, what's what's in the pipeline and. I'm looking forward to continue working with you and hope that many of the researchers and research service providers who are listening will also look into it, unless you're already using it. Give it a try and just make sure you have all the terms that are important to you in your research registered in Chaos to make them citable. 
exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, likewise. Looking forward to 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 keeping working together and and uh, and yes, uh, and and uh, again, uh, just to team up with with all the all the other uh, the others around that are working uh, to the same aim. There are uh, so many, so many around the globe these days. So mm -hmm. let's team up together and. And 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 create some some better future. Yeah. Yeah, a meaningful and functional future, future rich, and futuristic while still very much in the present scholarly publishing infrastructure. Indeed, indeed. And it's already quite exciting. It's a bit bumpy here and there, but it's an exciting journey already. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, very bumpy but exciting. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so welcome back. So um, listeners expect to hear more from Gabriele and us, and we welcome you to one of our upcoming shows. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you again.